All right, we are here at my outdoor worm bin and we are going to update the frozen versus raw cabbage worm bin. And right here was where the frozen portion was and there's our critter hole for our, you know, determination of where it was. And this is our raw one. Now the frozen one was 75% gone. We had pulled it apart a little bit and the raw was actually 100% intact and had some roots and uh, sneak peek, I still see some <laughs> right there. Um, so we are gonna dive in and look at both of those. And if we run into the mango seed, then we'll update that too. So let's go right in to the frozen section right here and immediately I'm finding some pretty big worms just enjoying themselves right there. So let's keep going and here's the mango seed. We'll, we'll get to that in a second, but okay. I'm starting to see a little bit and it has been 11 days. I was gonna update at five, but Chris Kelly had guessed 11. So I figured I'd just go right for his guess. And this is what I'm seeing so far for the frozen. And you know what? I think that portion may have not quite got the deep freeze that the others did because it is it's white compared to what we were seeing last time, which was kind of dark, dark brown, a um, little bit of cabbage. I don't know if this may be something or kind of bedding, but so far it is, those are the only two pieces I see. You know, that that's pretty done. Okay, here I'm finding a little bit more, a little bit more of the portion that probably hadn't quite got all the way frozen maybe because like I said it was it was a zero degrees Fahrenheit I think negative 18 Celsius for about six to seven hours it, it wasn't overnight that it had been placed in the freezer again little pieces but we're talking maybe 10 percent of what was the frozen cabbage and really just the pieces that were you know, probably not quite frozen, but just teeming with worms. I mean, just, they really, you know, were all over it in the juices that were below it, that kind of thing. So this kind of makes me think we may be in a bit of a predicament with the raw one. So let's put this back where it was and let's get to the raw one. And right away, wow, well, look at, I don't know if you can see this, but I mean, just, just tons of worms over where the, the frozen was. So I would say for this, at 11 days frozen, the portions that were frozen were totally digested. So Chris Kelly wins, winner, winner, chicken dinner. But okay, let's go into the raw and just kind of get, get over the top. And this, this looks like growth. And this does too, right here. Let me lift it up. This, I mean, to me, kind of looks like cabbage growth. That wasn't there last time. It's kind of bending a little bit. I mean, that's probably from cellular expansion. They have eaten portions of it. So this leaf right here, put my hand in between. Um, they have eaten part of it. So they are getting to the parts that have started to decompose. And look at that root structure. That is way bigger than last time. Look at all those roots. It just shows you life wants to keep living. That is crazy. And this was in my, there's a worm in, <laughs> in between. And this was in my free, uh, my refrigerator for about a month and a half. Uh, and a black soldier fly larvae. Remember last time there were several black soldier fly larvae in the, in the raw, in the frozen portion. And as I come in here, I'm seeing worms and black soldier flies so you know what we're gonna do we are going to help this along without damaging the worms because I think I think cabbage if you put it in your bin it is gonna try and live so if you're gonna put cabbage in unless it's totally putrid and decayed um, you know this wasn't something we would have eaten that's why it made it to the worm bin but um, it still needed to be frozen. So unless your cabbage was left outside in the summer heat and is just nasty, I would say if you're gonna put cabbage in the, in the bin, you should probably freeze it. So I'll make a hole and we'll make this the, the raw portion. And um, we'll keep the experiment going, but 
it's really going to be interesting. It may be going longer than I, I expected with that. So let's kind of dig in. We'll dig underneath too to see if we see any worms. Here's some of that bedding. And I did add water. Whoa, look at this. Look at this. Look at that. Look at all those baby worms. I think we've found where the baby worms like to hang out in between the moist um, toilet paper rolls and... This looks like part of an egg carton baiting station that I had put in there. But let's let's just keep digging. Um, yeah, so here's some of the bedding. That's good. But I put water um, on this after we did that other update just to kind of add some moisture to it. It's not raining as much outside now here in Florida, so it's not getting as much moisture. But, you know, you can see all kinds of worms everywhere. And as far as the smell goes, unless I'm really close, I don't smell anything. It really doesn't even smell like cabbage. It's more of a, um, almost like a citrusy smell. I'm not sure what that's all about. But of course, it also smells like earth, like dirt or a forest floor, like all worm bins should look. But look at, all, look at these worms. This is, this is fantastic. It is really, this bin is really full of all kinds of different ages of worms, all red wigglers, but we'll just kind of dig around a little bit. <laughs> Pine cones getting smaller and smaller with a tiny baby, a tiny baby right there. All right, so last time the cotyledon was mostly gone and now I'm just seeing inside, seeing worms. I don't see any black soldier fly larvae anymore. What's in there is just castings that they've, it's probably been brought in from just being in the bin. Not really anything to do with the mango. But we'll keep going with this and as it gets easier to kind of rip apart i'll start doing that but we're going to find out all the way down to finished castings how long a mango seed can last in an outdoor worm bin so again i'm just going to aerate this out and then we'll reset the feeding zone and we'll add some coffee and pulverized eggshells for grit so why don't we do that right now just fantastic this bin is this bin is just a great experimental bin. You can do so much stuff with it, and it just keeps plugging along. If you look back at all my videos, and I have three playlists, one for each of my worm bins, so if you want to subscribe, easy access to them right there. You know, I've done so many different things with this worm bin and made mistakes and and done great things with it, and it just keeps, keeps going. It's like the bulletproof bin. So let's add some of that coffee, and maybe this will help too with that raw but you know i would say this raw is probably only 60 percent there of course it looks less there now that i ripped it apart but you know maybe 70 percent is cabbage and 30 percent they ate let's just go with that number and we'll put some grit but hopefully you know breaking it apart a little bit will help it break down you know and any kind of decomposition that happens with it will be make it more and more suitable for the worms to come in and digest it and I have all kinds of little pieces everywhere. Cabbage is unlike any other thing that I've put in this bin as far as, you know, growing like that. I mean, I've had seeds grow, that kind of thing, but cabbage that I thought was done and not capable of life, you know, kind of came back to life and was trying to grow. Now, certainly I don't think I could have planted that in the ground and it would grow into anything. Even now, if I planted that in the ground, it's not gonna grow another cabbage, but that was really, really interesting. So I think we've, done everything uh oh i don't know if that's frozen or raw but it's gonna go underneath um i think we've done everything that we needed to in the bin here so we'll kind of wrap it up and hope everybody is having a great day and happy vermicomposting everybody take care now